grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this Feast of Epiphany comes from our first reading from the second chapter of the prophet Isaiah, verses 2 through to 5. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it, and many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their, pl their swords into plowshares, and spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up swords against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. This prophecy of Isaiah is identical to the prophecy of Micah 4 verses 1 to 3. The two use the same words. The only difference between the two is the changing around of nations and peoples. Isaiah says, the nations shall flow to it, and many people shall come and say. While Micah says, people shall flow to it, and many nations shall come and say. Isaiah says, he shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And Micah says, he shall judge between many peoples, and shall decide for strong nations far away. Micah also adds an additional verse at the end about every man sitting under a vine and fig tree and being unafraid. Otherwise, these two prophecies are word for word. Of course, many liberal theologians will then debate which prophet copied the other. Because, obviously, if the Bible says the same thing in one section, then that section must have copied the other section. But as for us scholars, who believe in the inerrancy and inspiration of Scripture, we simply confess that God gave each prophet the same prophecy. Why not? Micah and Isaiah were contemporaries, preaching to the same kings and in the same situations. Why should they not have similar or the same prophecies. I would argue that the slight differences in wording between the two accounts would confirm the idea that one did not copy the other. If you were copying someone, why would you not copy it exactly? The similarities demonstrate that God gave each prophet the same prophecy, but the minor differences demonstrate that each prophet received their prophecy independently. This prophecy begins by declaring that these events will take place in the last days. By this we do not merely mean the second coming of Christ, although the promise that wars will no longer exist is clearly a reference to the new heavens and the new earth. Yet when the people spoke about the last days, this was not limited to just the last day when Christ returns. In the Old Testament, the term the last day or latter days refers to the messianic age. In the New Testament, the term last days is used in reference to the first coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, and the present coming of Christ through word and sacrament. In Hebrews 1-2, the author of that epistle used the term last days to refer to the birth and life of Christ. In Acts 2.17, St. Peter uses the term last days to refer to the age of the church post-ascension and Pentecost, demonstrating that we are currently in the last days. Yet in James 5.3 and 1 Peter 1.5, St. James and St. Peter use the term last days to refer to the second coming of Christ. The last days refer to the days of the Messiah, from his coming to earth in the conception of the in the conception of a virgin to his coming in judgment to judge the living and the dead and everything in between. As people in the middle of these last days, we tend to view things in parts. The, last, the life of Christ, the life of the apostles, the age of the church, and the second coming in the future. As for Isaiah, who lived before these days, he sees them as one single part similar to how you might look at next week as a single collection of seven days. But when you are in the middle of that week, you will think about the days past, the day you are on, and the day still yet to come. The world's commentator John Brown in his People's Bible Commentary on Isaiah stated that we live between the two events that Isaiah saw as one. 
Brown includes in his commentary of a di includes in his commentary a diagram explaining how we view the last days as the life of Christ, the present age of the church, and the second coming. Well, Isaiah saw this as one single event. That is essentially what we call the last days, a one big event spread out from the conception of Christ till his second coming. The last days simply refer to the coming of the Messiah. This includes his first coming from conception to ascension, his present coming through word and sacrament, and his second coming to judge the living and the dead. When we remember that we are currently in the last days, as St. Peter confessed at Pentecost, we then consider the prophecy of Isaiah as something that is both happening now and something that is going to happen in the future. This is most evident when we consider the twofold kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is presently coming to us in the form of the kingdom of grace, that is, the church. But there is a day coming in the future when the kingdom of God will come to us in the form of the kingdom of glory, the new heavens and the new earth. We see this when we compare the epistle of the Ephesians with the revelation of St. John. In Revelation 21, John speaks about the new heavens and the new earth, and there he speaks of the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem being the bride of Christ, while in Ephesians 5, Paul speaks of the church as the bride of Christ. Isaiah prophesies about Jerusalem, the house of the Lord. This is a reference to God's people, to the new Jerusalem, the church in this age and in the age to come. Isaiah speaks of the mountain of the house of the Lord, that is Mount Zion being the highest of all the mountains, lifted above every other hill. The lifting up of Mount Zion is a reference to worshipping of the worship of the one true God being lifted up above all others. As Edward Young wrote in his commentary the, on the book of Isaiah, by, by means of this picture, Isaiah wishes to teach the truth that the worship of the Lord will triumph over all other religions and forms of worship. In ancient Israel and Judah, the pagan altars were built on the high places on the tops of mountains. By raising up Mount Zion, God is raising up his worship above all others. This concept is reinforced by Micah's version of this prophecy. Micah gives the same prophecy about the raising up of Mount Zion. At the end of this prophecy, Micah says, For all the peoples walk each in the name of their God, but we walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The unbelievers worship false gods on the high places, but the Lord will raise up his house, his church, above all others. With the lifting up of Mount Zion also comes the flattening of all other mountains. As John Lang wrote in his commentary on the Holy Scriptures on Isaiah, comparing other passages, it seems to be me probable that Isaiah would say there will be in general no mountain on earth except Mount Zion alone. Consider Psalm 46 in which the mountains of the earth are covered by the roaring waters of the sea, where Mount Zion alone stands as the unmoved mighty fortress. The day is coming when the house of the Lord will stand above all others and gather to itself peoples and nations for all, from all over the earth. In that day the people will gather up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, so that, we may so that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. In verse 5, Isaiah comes to the house of Jacob, to, calls to the house of Jacob to come and walk in the light of the Lord. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the word of the Lord is called the light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Isaiah prophesies of a day when the peoples and nations will come to the house of the Lord to walk in the light of the word of the Lord. And from out of Zion shall go the law. From Jerusalem shall go the word to, of the Lord. In Acts 1, 8, during the ascension, Jesus commissioned the apostles to go out from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Isaiah prophesies about the last days, and at Pentecost, St. Peter confesses that we are now in those last days. Isaiah prophecies, Isaiah's prophecy has been fulfilled in the life and work of the church. The church is the house of the Lord, where people gather around every, from every nation, tribe, and tongue to hear the word of the Lord, to be taught his ways, 
to walk in his paths. From this new Jerusalem, the word of the Lord goes out to all peoples and nations calling to come and to gather on this holy mountain. The last days are now. The gathering of the people into the house of the Lord is now. The day is coming when Christ will return to judge the living and the dead. Verse 4 of Isaiah 2 is very much about the new heavens and the new earth, when Christ will return to judge the nations, when our weapons of war will be turned into tools of farming. Isaiah simply speaks of the sword becoming a plough and spears becoming pruning hooks. Micah then adds that each man will sit under his, his vine and fig tree and no one shall make him afraid. This is similar to the language of Isaiah 65 verses 21 to 22, where Isaiah speaks of the new heavens and the new earth, where Isaiah speaks of the people in the new heavens and the new earth, building their own house, planting their own vineyards and fruit trees, and that each man will enjoy his own fruit and another will not take. And each man shall eat the fruit of his vine and tree without fear of another man stealing his fruit. The day will come when Christ comes in his glory to judge the living and the dead, to destroy the old heavens and the old earth, and to replace them with the new heavens and the new earth. Their people of every nation, tribe and tongue will gather together to worship the Lord, and none shall know what war is. As for now, Christ comes to us in his kingdom of grace. He gathers his people together from every nation, tribe and tongue around his word and his sacrament. Here we learn the ways of the Lord, so that we may, we may walk in his paths. Here we are strengthened by the word of the Lord, for the days are still to come. For the days still to come. In Revelation 21, 22 to 24, John speaks of the new heavens and the new earth, and how there will be no sun, but that the nations will walk by the light of God and the lamp of the Lamb. In the life to come, the Lord will be our light. This side of eternity, the word of the Lord is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. As 1 John 1 says, If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with God and we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. This light we find in the church, the house of Jacob, through the word read and preached, and through the word received in baptism, absolution and communion. O house of Jacob, Praise Isaiah. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore, let us do as Isaiah urges. Let us walk in the light of the word of the Lord. Let us gather into this house of the Lord around word and sacrament. Let us walk in the light that shines forth from the word of the Lord. Let us go up to this mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, so that he may teach us his ways, and so that we may walk in his paths. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We now sing our next hymn, number 43.